The following program has been rated PG-13. Shalom Israel, give it honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of his word. And I just want to say happy Sabbath to all of Israel out there. Happy Sabbath to my brothers and sisters. Now, I want to go ahead and jump into this. I want to read Acts 5 today for the purpose of what YouTube is actually doing to this particular channel. And like I told you all last week, I absolutely love that this is happening. Not that our brothers and sisters are not receiving the word, but the fact that they are actually attacking this channel because the truth is coming out. Now, the bottom line to the matter is this. This word is going to reach who it is supposed to reach. All right, so the Most High will do his thing. I got to do my thing here, and he's going to do the rest. All right, so I don't worry about that. I don't worry about their little copper law or anything like that. All right, I'm dealing with my people and... Those of you who are supposed to receive this word is going to get this word and nothing is going to be able to stop that. And that's what we are going to deal with today. All right. The people who are supposed to get this word and how nothing will stop you from getting this word. So we are going to be reading Acts chapter five today. All right. So remember, I read from the 1611 King James Version Bible. And remember, open your Bible and read along. Okay. So the beginning of the chapter here doesn't necessarily tie into what I want to bring out, what I want to talk to, but it does give some things here that I do want to go over. So that's why I, I always like reading the entire chapter so that you can get the proper context of everything. All right. So of course, we're going to be doing some starts and stops and everything. So like I said, just stay with me. All right. So let's go ahead and do this here. We're reading Acts chapter five, and I'm going to start at verse one. All right. All right, Israel, let's do this today. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. So they sold something. And I'll get into the history in another lesson because I actually want to go over that one in detail. All right. But this is about a man named Ananias and his wife. And they actually took something and they sold it. All right. So let me continue. And kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So these are two dishonest people, a dishonest husband and wife. They sold something and versus taking all of the profits to the profits, they actually stole some, kept it back and gave them only a portion. But Peter said, now remember, this is Peter, one of the apostles, one of the men that walked with our big brother Christ. All right, now at this point here in Acts, Christ has already ascended back into heaven. So this is all the activity that's happening right after Christ was crucified. All right. So let me start back at verse three. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? So as you see, Ananias sold a piece of the land. But now Peter is confronting him saying, why are you stealing? What you doing? Well, yo, why didn't you just give everything? All right, so let's continue. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So Peter is breaking them down now saying, yo, listen, yo, you didn't lie to me. I, you lied to the most high. Like you got a much bigger problem than actually sitting here lying to us. What you did was unconscionable. Like what is wrong with you? You lied to the most high. So again, like I said, I want to dig so much deeper into this part, but I got that for another lesson though. But I'm going to try to, like I said, let me just keep going. Let, let me just, let me just do that. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down 
and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. So what happened? So I want you to understand the power that Peter had. So Peter confronted Ananias and said, listen, man, you didn't steal from us. You stole from the most high. You lied to the most high, man. And what happened right after that? He died. The most high made him drop dead right there on the spot. Right after Peter proclaimed, you lied to the most high. And he said that he fell and gave up the ghost. So right there, what does that tell you? When you die, your spirit goes back to the most high. All right. But I just want you to see the sort of punishment that the most high gave this man, Ananias, which is one of our ancestors. He killed him on the spot, made him drop dead right then and there. And that right there showed everybody just how much the most high is now playing with Israel. Made him die on the spot. Boom. And everybody around that saw that was in Fear, complete fear. All right, let's continue. Verse six. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. So all the young men that was around, they picked him up, they picked his dead body up, and went and buried him. Verse seven. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. So now the wife, she was away. She didn't know that her husband is dead. And now she's coming in. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, yay, for so much. So at least she was honest to him. All right. She, she wasn't honest altogether, but she just told him straight up like, yeah, that's how much we sold it for. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. So now he's telling him like, yo, your husband dropped dead earlier and they're about to bring him out for you to see. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost and the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried by her husband. So I want to stop real fast. Can you imagine this? <laughs> Can you imagine? Now, remember, you got to understand the atmosphere. Here it is. Everybody saw Christ and all the miracles and everything that Christ has done, right? And not only Christ, but also the apostles. Now, Christ is God. Remember, everybody witnessed Christ going up into the clouds are right, being received by the chariots. Now, right after this time here, the apostles are still going around and they're producing miracles as well. And so here it is, the most high given direction, like I don't want to get into that part yet. Well, like I said, it'll be for another lesson. And the most high is given this direction amongst Israel. And here you have, even with seeing all that, seeing all these miracles, you have this husband and wife that's still stealing, stealing right from under her brothers and sisters and his brothers and sisters. And then the Most High made these two drop dead, bow, in front of everybody and yielded up the ghost. And now all of the people that surrounded, they're seeing all this. Can you imagine what that atmosphere must be like? I'm telling you, that's what we need today. We need some people just dropping dead for no reason. All right, forget about the killings and the murders and all that stuff. Just to, boom, just drop dead. <laughs> Watch this. All right, so now let's go, where were we? Here we are. We are at verse 10. No, excuse me, verse 11. And great fear came upon all the church, all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. So when this happened, this was widespread. It hit everybody, all the church. Now remember, who's the church? The church is Israel, not the whole world. All right, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they 
were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. So let's go ahead and break that down again here. Now, here it is. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders. So the apostles were still doing the signs and wonders, like I said earlier. Now, wrought means to shape, to mold. And wonders wrought among the people and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Now, why are they calling it Solomon's porch? Because they are in the temple of Solomon, all right? King Solomon, our ancestor. So all of these Israelites are, are, are scattered around and everybody knows the deal. Don't play with the most high. Don't steal, don't break any commandments. Let's just do what he says. This is why I said they were all on one accord. And the Most High had to make examples out of the husband and wife. And now remember, in unison. Now I want y'all to get that. Okay? The husband and wife were in unison with their, with their sin. Just like so many are going to be in unison in the last days with these Edomite philosophies that the Most High tell you don't do. All right? Here we go. Verse 13, and of the rest, durst no man, now durst means dare, like I dare you, like, like, I, like I wish you would, I dare you. That's what it means. And of the rest, durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. Verse 14, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. So with these miracles happening here and with the Most High dropping dead, the husband and wife, all the people are starting to see now. And this is just spreading across the vast lands where all the Israelites dwell. And they're like, okay, well, you know what? Yo, this thing with the, mo yo, this thing with the Most High and Jesus is real. This is absolutely real. All right, we are all on one accord. Here we go. Verse 15. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter, I'm gonna read that again, that at, excuse me, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. So I want you to understand the level of power that's happening on the earth right now, especially there in Jerusalem and the surrounding areas. So here are the disciples and they're still doing their miracles and they're bringing all of their sick ones, all of their, their aging grandmothers and sickly fathers and family and friends. And they're bringing them all to the apostles and saying, look, we know what y'all do. Yo, heal our families. Okay. Yo, heal our people. Heal me. And they were so caught up in the fascination of this that they said, you know what? Maybe if their shadow was to come over us, that we'll be healed. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? So that was only the apostles. So can you imagine the atmosphere when Christ went into a territory? This is crazy. And you know what's crazy? This is the same power that you have. Right now, if we'd only keep the commandments. Verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, like I was saying earlier, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. Everyone. Did you see that? There wasn't a person left behind that was not healed just by these disciples and their shadows. So the power that they had was healing all the people. This is, this is a beautiful thing. I want y'all to get this. This is an absolutely beautiful thing. These were our ancestors doing this. All right, verse 17. Then the high priest rose up, high priest, pastors, and all, excuse me, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. Now, we went over what indignation was before. They were filled with this, this hatred. Like, what the hell are these niggas doing? 
Wait a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. These apostles. Hey, y'all are taking away the attention of what we are up here doing, okay? Y'all are down there talking about the word of the most high and uh, it's actually working. Mm, we can't have that. No, we can't have that. Y'all got to stop. All right. So verse 18 and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. So what's happening right now? All of the apostles are going around with their signs and their wonders, and they're actually making things happen. They're showing that the word of the most high God is actually true and the power in the word of the most high. And these Sadducees are getting offended because what they do is a bunch of BS, nonsense. And these apostles are showing everybody how full of crap they really are. So what they do, they went and they beat them up and put them in prisons. Don't think that's not going to come back. Verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go stand and speak in the temple, Solomon's temple, the porch of Solomon, to the people, all the words of this life. Do you see that? This is what happens when you roll with the most high. You are under the most high's protection and he sends his angels. So what happened? They beat him up put him in prison, and God said, go get them out. The angel comes down, pops the lock, and tells him, go out there and finish preaching the word. Do you understand that? The angel instructed them to go out there and continue teaching the laws, statutes, and commandments given by the Most High. So do you see even the angels tell us to keep the commandments? I'm telling y'all, this whole book is about keeping the commandments, giving the instructions to Israel to keep the commandments. That is what we are supposed to do as a nation. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that is what we're supposed to do. All right. So now let's go to verse, uh, let me read verse 20 again. Go. Stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. This life. 21. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. They were obedient to one of the Lord of hosts. Here we go. Let me read 21 again. And they Excuse me. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came. Here it comes again. Here comes your Sunday pastor. And they that were with him and called the council together and all the Senate of the children of Israel. Now, let me stop right there before I go any further. I'm going to read uh, 21 again. So do you see this right here? Here comes the high priest and all the council and everybody that came with him. But who is he? He is an Israelite. The children of Israel. So here is that division. All right. One third, two third, one third, two third. It's happening now and it was happening all the way back then too. There's no difference. Like Solomon said, now remember, they're standing in the temple of Solomon. What did Solomon say? Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. This is all the same. We are still living the same pattern as our forefathers and foremothers from all the way back then, all the way up until now. Now, back then, they were apostles and Sadducees and Pharisees. Today, it's Israelites versus Christianity. I'm going to read 21 again. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came and... And they that were with him and called the council together and all the Senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. So now they were like, yo, go get them. 
They went went to the prison. Yo, yo, go get them. We're not playing. Verse twenty two. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found, we shut with all safety, and the keeper standing without the chimney, without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. So now the guards are telling them, like, yo, listen, hold on, time out. We put them in there. All right. And not only did we put them in there, but we had guards outside. They were watching them, but they're not there now. So, again, you have to understand. I want you to now remember there's guards standing outside of this. So there was a supernatural event that occurred when they took them out for the guards not to see them. So what happened here? And a lot of people miss this. What happened? Because it didn't say that there was any broken locks. Or it was damaged or anything like that. No. They went into a trance. Moved from one life into the other. And back into this life. Isn't that crazy? Took them out the cell without anybody seeing anything. And put them directly into the temple. That's how you know the diff that there's a difference between this life here and in the spiritual world. How did this happen? They were with an angel. And an angel took them from one place to another. That's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely nuts. All right, uh, let's go now to verse 24. Now, when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. So they're like, okay, this can't get out. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. They didn't even see him. That's how dope that escape was. They didn't even see him. Picked him up from one life, took him through another part of life and put him right there. Put him in a temple. Now, don't you think these apostles would have been seen by these guards? See that? They don't, they, they don't take their time to read this book. They don't take their time to meditate on this. This is crazy. This supernatural event occurred and absolutely no one saw it. That is a beautiful thing. Absolutely beautiful. All right, let's continue. Uh, verse, where are we at? Uh, verse 26. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. Now, understand that now. Y'all got to see where, <laughs> y'all got to see this. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. So they're like, what the hell? What's happening? So, them officers and that captain knew, all right, yo, we gotta uh, be easy. All right, don't run up on them like this. Be easy. Because they just witnessed a supernatural event. And they're like, okay, these men here, all right, uh, they're different. All right, let's continue. For they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. So what are they saying right now? Why are y'all teaching that truth? Why are y'all teaching that doctrine, the real doctrine of the truth? which is Christ and the truth of your ancestors and the power of the most high God. Why are y'all teaching that? Y'all messing with our money. Y'all can't be teaching that. Oh my God, what's happening today? What's happening today with all of these Sunday pastors raising an uproar because of what the Israelites are teaching? T.D. Jakes is on a firestorm right now doing it. If you if you are not familiar, oh he's he's going against he's he's trying to go against these Israelites. But guess what? 
You lose TD fakes, TD snakes, whatever you want to call yourself, dude. But he really is a Jake because he's from the tribe. He, he's from Jacob. But he chose to be a Sadducee and a Pharisee. Shame on you, TD Jakes. Let's continue. Verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So they said, yo, listen, we're not listening to you. We doing what the most high told us to do. That's what we doing. Verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Verse 31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. I'm going to read that again. For to give repentance to Israel. Not the whole world. Not the Edomites. Not the Ishmaelites. Not the Ammonites. Okay? No one else but Israel. And it says it here again, just like Christ said in Matthew 15, 24. I am not come for the world. He said, what did he say he came for? He came for Israel. Israel and Israel only. And it, go ahead and it says it right here again. Precept. And forgiveness of sins. Verse 32. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Let me make sure I expound and stress that. Who the Holy Ghost is given to. The Holy Ghost is given to those that follow the laws, statutes, and commandments. So if you are in a Sunday church, okay, on Sunday, worshiping a false god, the god Ra, okay? When y'all in there, catching the Holy Ghost and, and doing all that stupid, ridiculous stuff, you are a bunch of devils. Y'all are liars. Because, number one, if you're in a church on Sunday, you are not being obedient to the Most High. Point blank and simple. And when you're sitting there having those convulsions and all that, the most I said, those are evil spirits. Just like we learned in the chapter here. What was going on there? All those people sitting, claiming to have the Holy Ghost and doing whatever they, they, they're shaking and that garbage and that nonsense. Guess what that is? That is an evil spirit. Because it just tells you right here who the Holy Ghost is for. It's for those who obey the most high God. And how do you obey him? By keeping the commandments. I'm glad we got that straightened up. Verse 33. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Did you get that? He said they were cut to the heart when they heard what they said. What did he just say here? For those of them who obey these Pharisees, Sadducees, who today are the Sunday pastors, they have a problem with obeying the laws of the Most High God. And when you come at any one of them with that, they get pissed off. They say, no, you can't keep the commandments. No, Israel, you can't do that. Because if you keep these commandments, Malachi's out the window. We can't get paid. You niggas need to pay us. And that's the problem here. That right here in the book of Acts. And y'all need to write that down. And y'all need to meditate on that scripture. This is, like I said, y'all see where all the problems come from these evil dog pastors. All right? And what they want to do? And took counsel to slay them. They wanted to kill them. Don't think for one second that is not coming back to this planet because it is. Verse 34. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law. So a man that is has an expertise in the law, had in reputation among all the people. So he was popular. Everybody knew who he was. 
and commanding to put the apostles forth a little space. So this man stood up and said, whoa, 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 hold on, time out, wait a second. So this dude is getting his mind right, like, hold on a second, wait, wait. Uh, I don't think y'all might want to deal with these dudes like this. Hold on, fall back for a second, fall back. And said unto them, ye men of Israel, who's he addressing again? Israel, 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 this is all about us. Take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. So he's telling them, yo, listen, he's talking to the rest of the council. Yo, listen, yo, y'all fall back. Wait a second, stop. Uh, take heed. Y'all better think about what y'all about to do to these men. Verse 36. For before these days rose up, Thedias, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who was slain. Let me go back. My phone's updating. I hate when it does this. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm going to read it again. For before these days rose up Thedas, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who was slain and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to nothing. Not means nothing. After this man rose up, Judas of Galilee, in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. Same thing, scattered. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest Happily ye be found even to fight against God. So what happened? So this man stood up and gave examples. One of the this and the other of Judas. And he said that these men had men that followed them. And all of these men and the people who followed them were slain, were done. Because they were doing something outside of what the Most High did. Being disobedient and going against their people. And he said, listen... These men right here, if they're doing this all on their own terms and God is not included, it's not going to work. But indeed, if this here is being done by the most high, there's nothing you niggas can do to stop these men. Stop. Leave them alone. And y'all got to get this. This was one man who had his mind right because everybody saw the miracle that these men were doing, that the, that the apostles were doing with all the sick people around. And this man had enough sense to stand up and say, yo, listen, I know what I saw. Leave these men alone. Leave these cats alone. Don't bother them. I don't want nothing to do with this. All right, y'all better stop. Use your brains. All right, let's continue. Verse 40. And to him they agreed. <laughs> and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they were like, all right, so before we let y'all go, we're going to rough y'all up a little bit. Now, listen, we, 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 we telling you, don't preach this again. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So what happened here? So now the Pharisees and the council, they was like, yo, listen, all right. If we don't do something, then we're going to get punished by the upper council. All right. So today that would be your, it will be the government. Because as you know, today, the government controls the Christian church. All right. So back then the government controlled the Pharisees and Sadducees. 
and they were responsible for executing punishment amongst the amongst the, the uh, disciples and the apostles. So they were like, all right, well, look, we got to do something to y'all, all right? So don't teach that word again, okay? And what happened? The apostles and the disciples, they were like, yo, we are so happy to take that ass whooping. But guess what? We are not going to stop teaching a damn thing. And that's the attitude that's coming back on this planet right now. Because our brothers are standing up. We are teaching our people. We're on the highways. We're on the streets. We're teaching our people. And we don't give a damn about the consequences. Now, remember, the Most High said, in order to roll with him, no fear. You cannot have any fear with the Most High. And the Most High does not put a spirit of fear on his people. Now, it does, does, it does not just stop here with us, Israel, okay? Not with just a handful of us. That also includes you, Israel. Guess what? You have to teach your people. That is a commandment. You have to teach your people. The same spirit that they had on them, that Peter and the apostles had, you have to have. Regardless of what anybody thinks about you, it doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. The only thing that matters is what the Most High told you to do. That is the only thing that matters. And he tells us to teach our people the laws, statutes, and commandments. Even the angels instructed that to be done. Remember, this all comes back to the commandments. That's the only thing that matters. Even Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I have to make sure that I stress this over and over and over, Israel. All of this is about keeping the commandments. So that means if you don't have fringes on your shirt, get them. It means that if you don't have fringes on your dresses, get them. It means that if you're still wearing pants, sisters, get out of them. Fellas, it means that if you are dressing effeminate, stop. It means that if you're eating pork, shrimp, lobster, stop. All right, these are the things that it has to do. It means that if you are working on the Sabbath, stop. It means if you are buying, selling on the Sabbath, stop. If you're cooking on the Sabbath, stop. All these things in Israel, y'all got to get into this Bible and see what the laws, statutes, and commandments are. All right, like I said, now we go over them, and I'm sure I'm going to be doing more about the laws that we have to keep. But the thing is, is that you have to get in the Bible and also read yourself. All right? Don't always trust, even I even say with me. All right? Don't just wait on the Sabbath to have this or what. No, get in that book and meditate. Remember, you have to study to show yourself approved. The only thing that myself and other brothers are bringing out is, guess, we are showing you how to read the Bible. We're showing you the truth in this Bible, and we are trying to cleanse your minds from all the crap and garbage that we've learned growing up in this Christian church and in Islam and all the other false, phony religions. We got to get out of that, and we have to bring it right back to this word and we have to keep our mouth shut and just read and do what we're supposed to do. When that happens, guess what? There's a trigger. The most high is like, all right, yo, they getting serious down there. Suit up. <laughs> and that's what has to happen. We keep thinking that we're waiting on the most high. No, the most high is waiting on us. And all it takes is one third of our people. That's it. And we get out of this hellhole. We go right back to Jerusalem where we belong, put back in the seats where we are supposed to be in, and paradise from there on out. No more bills. No more struggles. No more of our people getting shot down in the street. No more cancer. No more AIDS. Nothing. None of that. Paradise. 
No more being under Edomite rulership. Paradise. No more having to wait on the bus. Paradise. No more Uber. Paradise. Sisters, as we learned before, never again in travel will your feet touch the floor. Paradise. I don't know about y'all, but uh, that sounds excellent to me. That's exactly what I want. That's what I'm striving for. That's what I want my children to have. That is what I want my family, Israel, you. That is what I want all of us to have. But there's only one way that we're getting it, and that is by keeping the commandments. Keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments. That's what we have to do. All right? So, Israel, I'm so glad that y'all spent this time again with me here this Sabbath. And I always love waking up to give our people this word. It is an absolute honor. It is a pleasure. And I just want to say this here again. Now, remember, YouTube is attacking the channel. All right? So, and this is why I wanted to bring this message in. Because the whole point behind this is that I'm not stopping a damn thing. I'm going to keep going and going. And if it comes to the point where they just completely write this off or whatever, don't worry. I will be able to contact you somehow. All right? So, don't let any of this be of any concern to any of you. If we have to take this to a different platform, that's then that's exactly what we'll do. There's other social media platforms out there that we can use to get this word across. And even if I got to go back to, if I got to go back to the BCR, I'll go back to the BCR. It doesn't matter. I won't. But if I have to, I will. All right. So that's what it is. And Israel, again, I thank y'all for spending this time here. And I'm so happy. And it is a pleasure to bring this here to you. And I want you guys to continue to enjoy this Sabbath day and go grab your kids and hug them up and kiss them and let them know that y'all love them and hug each other and just embrace each other. Remember, we're gods. We are the kings and queens, princes and princesses of the earth. So let's start acting like it. All right. Israel. I love y'all. I'm out.